I think there's a better way of representing this sieve than a table with 10 columns. I think it works better with a table where the width of the table changes. If you have a table that has two columns, then all of the even numbers are in the second column. If you then increase the width to three, all of the numbers in the right-hand column are multiples of three, and so on. Whatever the width, it always starts with one, and if you exclude the top row, the right-hand column is always composite. Always. You can literally see that each number appearing in the right column is the product of the width and the height of the table. Like all sieves, the sieve of Eratosthenes is less of a prime finder and more of a composite finder. When the width of the table is odd, all of the primes line up on a diagonal and you get some pretty patterns. If the width of the table is even, all of the primes line up vertically. When the table has six columns, you can see that all primes greater than three line up on these two vertical lines. When the table has seven columns, you can see the same two columns, but now they're on two diagonal lines. If you start at five and seven and add six repeatedly, you can be guaranteed to hit every single prime number greater than three, but you're also going to hit a bunch of composites too. Every fifth number is divisible by five, every seventh number is divisible by seven, and so on. Because the primes are in these two columns or in these two diagonals, it's pretty easy to see the twin primes. Those are the prime numbers that are two numbers apart, like 17 and 19, or 29 and 31. Now we don't yet know if there are infinitely many of these or not. In its unoptimized form, you can brute force it and have columns of every width, but you can optimize the sieve by only picking the widths corresponding to prime numbers. But to do this, you need to know and have a way of recording what the smaller primes are. Here I've highlighted the numbers that you could reasonably say won't be made composite by increasing the width of the table to a larger number. Those are the primes smaller than the square of the width of the table. So a table of width 5 gets you all the primes to 25. A quick note. By creating a table of numbers, we're effectively wrapping the number line when we get to a particular width. Each row has more numbers to the right and to the left, but we're hiding them because they're duplicates. The sieve of Eratosthenes is what I'd call a low processor, but high memory algorithm. It's low processor in that you can draw lines down whole columns of composite numbers. There's no division required and no complex calculations. Unfortunately, it only works when you start from 1. You can't skip ahead and put, say, 101 in the top left corner, because that's not evenly divisible by a bunch of smaller numbers. The sieve works pretty well, but you have to work up to it. So it becomes memory hungry, and it only really works on smaller numbers. It is, though, a really easy way of teaching people about prime numbers. So to recap, the sieve of Eratosthenes has pros and cons. It doesn't require any calculations. It's simple to understand. It does a great job of finding composites, and it's optimizable. But it's also memory hungry. It works best on small numbers, and to get the most out of it, you need to find a way of changing the dimensions of the table. I think there's a better way of representing a sieve like this.